Hello, this is Laura Peters coming to you from Dublin, Ireland again. I always have to say the Ireland because I know my accent is going to throw people. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about coloring in your stamped images. Now, I don't think I'm very good at coloring. It's not something I really enjoy, so I tend to avoid stamps that need to be colored. Um, but sometimes they're just so stinking cute that I can't help it. I totally fell in love with this Taco Fiesta set. This is in the spring catalog. Stampin' Up! catalog only available till the end of April, Pro possibly not even till the end of then because it might sell out. Um, so I had to make an exception to the rule for my coloring in on this one because I just, I couldn't resist. I know you can't tell here and I didn't stamp it on here, but see these little faces? You can add the little faces to all the little peppers. Maybe we'll do that at the end just so you can see how cute they are. Okay, so I want to talk to you about a few different options for coloring. We have the stamp and write markers which are um, fine point on one end for you to write with, like especially helpful when you're scrapbooking. I use it to color the same color as the stamp when I'm signing the back of my card, when I put handmade by and then I write Laura on it. So, And then you have a fat end, which you can use for coloring on the paper or more fun, coloring on a stamp. So you can have a multicolor stamped image. So I'll have to show you that another time. We have the watercolor pencils. I have one set here, which has one set of colors. You have to get the expansion set to get the other set of colors. And I have the Stampin' Blends markers, which come in a pair. They should have a color lifter marker also. I don't have that one yet. Like I said, I'm not a massive fan of coloring, so I haven't really invested in that. Okay, now I wanna show you a little bit of a difference between some of the effects here. These, this side is using the water, watercolored pencils and a Stampin' Blend marker. Uh, sorry, Stampin' Blender pen. That's what we call it, a blender pen, and I'll show you that. These sides are colored with the markers. Okay, and then I have not done one yet with these. I'm gonna show you that. You can see the difference in the color saturation. Some These colors aren't all the same, but the red is. The red and the chili peppers is the said same. This is the real red um, watercolor pencil and the real red marker. And you can see the difference in the color saturation. Now, some of that has to do with just how hard you're pressing in the pencil. You can get different effects by just how hard you press with the pencil. Um, I did try to get this pretty dark though, and that's as dark as I could get it with that. And then here we have with the marker, you get a real deep color. So the nice thing is the pencils, let's just start with the pencils. Okay. Oh, and the other difference is that you, if you don't have good technique, which I would say that I do not, you will get streaks with your markers and you're less likely to get that with the watercolor pencils because you blend them in at the end. Now, sometimes that works to your advantage I'd say this cactus looks really cute streaky. I did that on purpose to mimic the lines in a cactus. So sometimes that works for you. Okay. So I've got my color pencils here, my watercolor pencils, and I want to color my guacamole. Holy guacamole, it's your birthday. So I'm gonna go over, this is the old olive color. Now, the cactus here, I used granny apple green, and the green here is garden green. I do not have those in this set of pencils, but that's okay, because you know what? Neither of those really works for guacamole. So I think that's a little, not quite the right shade, so I'm gonna come back over it with the yellow. And this is one thing I do really like about the watercolor pencils, is that it allows you to blend the colors a bit. I also wanna highlight these dark marks here, so I'm gonna to try to Press really hard with my green pencil. This would probably work better if I sharpened it. But the sharpener is downstairs and I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna highlight a little bit here. Okay, we're gonna use the blender pen. So this is a pen that is um, basically just slightly damp. So it's a, it's a plain nib here at the end of the pen and it just has slight dampness to it. Um, but it's not just water. They said it's a special mix. I don't know what it is, but when you're coloring a small, and I'm just gonna do little circles, smooth this, uh, smooth these lines out, blend things together a little bit. 
When you're doing a small picture like this, you can get away with using the regular cardstock, but with the sizes from a previous example, so I'm just gonna, between colors, you just scribble it until it goes clear again to get the color off. Uh, I had a point. Sorry. <laughs> I do that a lot. Okay. I'm going to take the same two color pencils and I'm going to color in and I'm going to go press really dark here on this skin because the skin of an avocado is darker and eh, I should probably be using the brown but I'm going to use the dark green and then I'm just going to press lighter here the middle I went outside the lines a little bit there this is oh sorry that's what that was my point with the regular Whisper White cardstock is okay. You can get away with it if you're doing a small image. If you're doing a larger image, you're really gonna wanna use either the shimmery white cardstock or the watercolor paper, which this one is, because it just holds up so much better with the application of the liquid. So what I'm gonna do here, you can see that that's, you can leave it like that if you want. That's a look. You can just color it in. It looks really bumpy because I'm using the watercolor paper, which is textured. The other way to do this, here we used a blender pen. So these are both, we're using the same pencils. This we used a blender pen to smooth it out. This one we're gonna use the watercolor painter, which is just a pen filled with water. You could get a similar effect just using a paintbrush and a cup of water, but that's uh, too messy for me. I'm not squeezing it and there's still plenty of water coming out. So you do get more of a true watercolor effect with this one. Definitely gonna wanna use a paper that can hold up to the water. Okay. As easy as that. Same thing, I'm just gonna scrub this off. So Whisper White cardstock, blender pens and watercolor crayons, watercolor paper, uh, aqua painter. And you can see, again, just pressing harder gave me a whole different effect there on the, with the color. So it's up to you what method you like, what effect you're going for. I like to have both tools. This is fairly, if you've got the watercolor pencils, it's fairly inexpensive to invest in both sets of tools. And then you have more tools in your arsenal. Okay. Next, we are going to do the, I thought I had stamped something else to show you. Well, anyways, um, let me just show you really quick how this marker looks. You do not have to press very firmly at all. And you get quite good color saturation with that. That's me barely touching the paper. And the nice thing about these is that when, if they start to dry out, you take your reinkers. Sorry, this isn't the right color, it's just the first one I could reach. A reinker like this, you pull the nib out with, you could do it with your fingers or tweezers, I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna make my fingers all messy. You pull it out, put a few drips of the appropriate color in there, put the nib back in, you're ready to rock. So I love that, that you don't have to throw them out. And then the other end, the writing end, it's quite smooth like this. Laura, like I'm signing my name, okay? So that's the Stampin' Write markers. I don't think you can order these individually anymore. You have to order whole color family, but I mean, it's my preferred method of coloring, so I'm okay with that. Okay. Now these are the Stampin' Blends. So the idea here is, it's the same thing where it's got a skinny end, or skinny-er end, and a thicker end. Now these come in a lighter and a darker. So this would be basic black, and so it's got just a lighter side and a darker side. I'm gonna do this whole area, so I'm gonna do color it all in light. Okay, again, I'm barely touching the paper here. Color the whole thing in light. I'll switch to the other end for this finer, smaller piece here. Easier to get detail. We're gonna go back over it with the black. I'm gonna do the fine end. Just gonna do, 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 do around the edge. I'm making little circles just to kind of shade it. 
And then ideally I would have the, the uh, color lifter and I could go back and it kind of, it's almost like an, uh, an eraser, take some of the color away to give you a better idea of shadow. Now, I know that doesn't look great. I'm not great at this. <laughs> this is why I don't usually color. When it dries, it will look more even. Okay, so I might come back to that in a minute. Here I have quite a few things that I colored. Here's a mistake that you can make with the when you're blending. I did the dark, the small pieces first, and then I came back and did the big piece. And when I was doing the blend, I accidentally reached up and I grabbed the red, and I drug that down in. So you're gonna want to watch that. Here it looks a little streaky and chunky, but that's okay because tacos are not that evenly colored. They've got a bit of texture to them, right? So I'm okay with that. Same thing here. I know what I want to show you. I want to show you the cute little faces on them. Okay, really quickly here. I've been using my Memento ink to color these in. Again, it's a small image. I'm not coloring too much. I can kind of get away with it. You ideally would want to use your stays on ink. If you use your stays on ink, I should say you want to use stays on if you're using the um, water-based. So for watercoloring, you ideally would use stays on. The Memento is good if you're using your markers. You need stays on cleaner if you're going to use your stays on ink. It does not come off with the regular stamp cleaner. Okay? So these two, you need both of these if you're getting them. So look how cute those are with the little face. And then I also fussy cut, we call it, some little sombrero. So I made a mistake, another another mistake here with the marker. Da 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 da! All resolved. Look how much more personality he has there. Isn't that cute? Now this has dried a little bit. It's not fully dry and you can see that it does look a little smoother there than when I was coloring it in. So there's our basics for coloring. You got just choose your tool and go with it. Budget wise, your watercolor pencils are the most cost effective and you just sharpen them just like a regular pencil. So you'd get your watercolor pencils and either a watercolor painter, uh, a painting pen, you know, the thing that looks like this. The blender pen or both. I like both, gives me some options. These ones I think are middle of the range price wise, but you have to buy a whole set. These ones you can buy one color at a time, but they're the most expensive and there's no way to refill them. So you got a few different options there, a few different effects. So this would be markers, this would be watercolors. We got watercolor with the painter, um, watercolor with the blending pens. It's up to you and what you wanna do, but there you go. I hope that helps you get started. Let me know if you have any questions and I would appreciate it if you would like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.